Señor Presidente. What can true Yarens do to serve Yara? True Yarens have long memories. We remember how so-called civilized nations treated us when we needed them most. Are you concerned about the terroristas who call themselves Libertad? You're an orphan, see? Why do you want to run? Remember, Danny, Castillo has kept you an orphan. I only see you. So why are you here? I watched Castillo order a whole boat of our people shot to death. And I want to know who's going to help me take him down. Okay. Castillo's got, what, 300,000 troops? I count six burnt out guerrillas, and you with a bullet to the leg. You can shoot, so shoot. You have rules. You might kill, but you're no killer. You know I'm not a guerrilla, right? Everything got another purpose. That usually work? 50-50. Eyes, Danny. I know exactly who you are. I am nothing like you. Hi there, I'm Navid Khavari, Narrative Director of Far Cry 6, and I'm so excited to represent our team and finally show you our game in action. With Far Cry 6, we're going to throw you into our most ambitious open world yet, Yara, an island deep in the heart of the Caribbean, filled with rich, tropical ecosystems alongside decaying urban landscapes. Yara is an island of contrasts. Isolated and frozen in time, for over 50 years after a violent revolution cut it off from the rest of the world, it now finds itself on the verge of collapse. Last year, we introduced you to Yara's Presidente, Anton Castillo, with an amazing performance by Giancarlo Esposito. A Castillo must be a lion, for Yara is full of lambs. The reception we've had to Anton and Diego has been incredible, and we're just getting started. Anton is a man hell-bent on returning Yara to his idea of its former glory. And while his motivations are far more complex than they seem, the cost of his vision will be paid in blood. If a dog refuses to break, then we must put them down. To achieve his dream for Yara and his son Diego, Anton has clamped down on freedoms, instituted brutal social reforms, and cast anyone who speaks out against him into forced labor. His oppression of the Yaran people has pushed the island to the brink of revolution. When tyranny is law, revolution is order. Yara, once considered a jewel of the Caribbean, is now a powder keg. And you are the match. Your name is Danny Rojas, and you'll experience the revolution through Danny's eyes right from the beginning. Born and raised in Yara's capital city, you're a young military dropout who wants nothing to do with Anton or the revolution. You just want to get the hell out of Yara. But once you're face to face with Anton's brutality, you realize that the only chance to live free is to lead an army of guerrillas into a new revolution with the very soul of the island at stake. And I need you here with us, man. At the start of your journey, you'll get to pick your identity and customize your look 
while you navigate the ranks of the guerrilla movement. Every aspect of the game has been developed with the goal to make you feel like a guerrilla fighter, battling an asymmetric war against Anton and his army. The guerrilla fantasy is all about making one guerrilla feel like a thousand. Embracing this was at the core of how we crafted our gameplay, our world, and the characters you'll meet along the way. In Yara, you'll find other guerrillas, black market dealers, and everyday Yarans who each have their own reasons for joining the cause including our friendly guerrilla Juan Cortez, a master of invention, an architect of revolution. He's our guerrilla teacher. And class starts now. Wapo, you listen. Rule 16, a guerrero's revolution never ends. Always another war, another cantina, another ugly bartender. Juan Cortez? What do you think gave it away, Wapo? This is a fucking waste of time. Can you whistle? What? Nah, you can't whistle. <laughs> Not bad, Danny, but we're just getting started. Rule number one, a good guerrilla is a hidden guerrilla. Puerto el perro, se acabó la rabia. We lead our operations in secret camps across the country. Here, guerrillas live, Kaboom! train, and plan. Small pack, we go in, grab our people, kill whoever gets in our way. By smuggling in supplies, You'll add some piss and fire to our movement. You got that right. Camp chef, black market dealers. These safe havens got everything a guerrilla needs. Even do-it-yourself vehicles. You're gonna love it, Danny. Rule number two. A good guerrilla masters their environment. This land is your home, Danny. I'm sure you know every inch of it the bloodthirsty jungles and postcard shorelines, the dead-end towns, and our friendly capital city. How you get around is up to you. Good girl. If you want to play it safe, take our secret paths carved in the dirt of old revolutions. Hola, Dani. How you doing? Or take a risk and operate in plain sight of Castillo's assholes. Go ahead and hide your weapons to blend in. Bribes. What do you got? Mm -hmm. Sabotage. Interceptions. Okay. You don't always need to be a loudmouth, Danny. Christmas trees? Do you even grow those here? Mexicans pay crazy money for this. How you think El Presidente funded Maria's new face? Okay. Go through. Rule number three. Fucked up situations call for fucked up solutions. Hey, he's not here. If you expect the reinforcements, I got news for you. You're an army of one against an army of thousands. And when shit gets real, we make use of whatever we have. We call that resolver. That means absolutely everything from sardine cans, goddamn batteries, Old motorcycle engines have been built into equipment. And some very unique, deadly weapons. Now we're fucking talking. This, the Supremo Backpacks. Handcrafted by yours truly. Each one will make you feel and fight with the power of a goddamn guerrilla army. Give me left. I'm gonna take you to the dark. Get a stick, make a switch. Get a conversation real quick. I am crap. I am lying. You and I both know. You want this. For a guerrilla. For a guerrilla, the shit my pants rush of an ambush. The taste of sweet victory. Have you freed your people from tyrants? It's... It's, it's fun. 
tempo and the final rule. A good guerrilla always brings a friend along for moral support. So there you have it. Far Cry 6 will be available on October 7th on PC and consoles. We hope you enjoyed this first glimpse of gameplay. We have a lot more coming soon that we can't wait to share with you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. What's going on, folks? You just got a first look at the Far Cry 6 gameplay reveal, and now we have a very special stream for you. My name is Yusuf Begid, uh, and I'm joined by our fellow host, Chastity Vicencio. Chastity, how are you doing today? Good. Happy Friday. That was great. That's so exciting. I, I cannot get over the Macarena gun. I'm sorry. I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, we are going to talk about all of that, everything you just saw, because we are joined by Far Cry 6's narrative director, Naveed Khavari. Naveed, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Hi. I am still a bag of nerves, but I'm okay. Yeah. I'm managing. <laughs> I feel so happy it's finally up there. I know. It's I'm, so proud of the team. I'm so proud. Yeah, of the you've been team working right on now. this for a while. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How's the team yeah. feeling today about this? Everyone was super hype. Uh, I think they're just, uh, you know, you've been on something like this for so long. It's been for me. It's been five years. For some of us, it's been five years, and and to finally just be able to get a nice, solid taste of it out into the world. Uh, like I couldn't be more proud of this team and and what we've done to get here. It's uh, it's been an amazing experience. Amazing experience. Well, congratulations. We are yeah, very excited. Uh, and folks, yeah, uh, if you're sticking around uh, there over at twitchtv slash Ubisoft, we'll be streaming for about the next hour or so. Um, and of course, if you're joining us on YouTube.com/Ubisoft, we're happy to have you there as well. Um, but basically, we we're playing Far Cry Five right now because unfortunately, mm -hmm. Far Cry Six not out yet. <laughs> but we got a release date, October 7th. Uh, yes. So we are, of course, we will bring that to you as soon as we can. But in the meantime, Naveed, you did some work on Far Cry 5 as well, right? I did. Uh, I was uh, the narrative director of the North region. So the if fans out there uh, uh, remember that, it was the Whitetail Mountains. Uh, the, the narrative director of the game was uh, obviously J.S. DeCant and... Uh, and we had a wonderful lead writer, uh, Andrew Holmes, and and so I was there. Uh, we had a great shout out to our Toronto team, uh, who worked on the Whitetail Mountains. So I, I convinced you guys to start here. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, get to see Cheeseburger. We get to see everyone. Yeah, it's like a... we are excited to see Cheeseburger again. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks. Uh, but yeah. It's been amazing, and honestly, what's super cool is the the Toronto team. Uh, our start goes all the way back to Far Cry Four. We did Shangri La uh, on Far oh. Cry Four. We worked on some of the open world for Primal, and then we got a bigger share as well on Far Cry Five. And you know, the brand uh, brand team has been so supportive of us and trusting us. You know, to take take on Far Cry 6 and I think that's that's what I hope fans are going to really see and enjoy is that you know we have that group of folks that have really worked from one Far Cry to the next um, and so I think it's going to be special. That's awesome. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really exciting. I didn't know the team worked on Far Cry Primal. That's uh, you know. Yeah. You know, the Beastmaster on... hunts. 
Oh, that's that awesome. Is, that is I awesome. mean, we're, nice. we're, we're big fans of Far Cry Primal here, and uh, you know, oh, our regular okay. our regular chat viewership is as well. That that game gets a lot of love. Uh, awesome. Oh, oh, oh there's, a, there's a helicopter. Okay. Uh oh. Of course there is. Of course there is. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we are we're in the Whitetail Mountains. This is Jacob's region. This is the northern region yeah. uh, of Hope County, and uh, it's a bit it's a bit of a tougher region, uh, for sure. Yes, but yes. It fortunately, is, uh, I have this uh, all military all the time. Yeah, I have this Loss right on down. Mars uh, uh, pistol here that uh, does some serious Pretty damage. Pretty great, like this, one shot. Yeah, this, this is cat is cheating. Shot. I don't know if this cat is cheating. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wait, okay, well, yeah, we'll, we'll Guns from space. the way that you want. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimate freedom. Listen, listen, when they start hurting Boomer, all all rules go out the window. Please. That's exactly. fair. No one that hurts is totally Boomer. fair. No, no one, one hurts Boomer. <laughs> no one hurts Boomer, and I think folks are yes. going to feel the same way about our, our little guy, Chorizo. Chorizo! Uh, right. Right. You got to see at the end! <laughs> So you know weird. the story. You know the story with Chorizo is. Uh, Please uh, tell me. I want yeah. everything. I want to know anything <laughs> about Chorizo. <laughs> Honestly, uh, it, it really the I'll tell you the concept team. There was a great concept artist that 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 worked on him, and when they sent him out, first of all, the name is perfect. But yes, literally, Chorizo I the came wiener in dog. And, it's perfect. So and then literally, I came in the next day. And everyone's wallpaper was chorizo. I'd never seen anything <laughs> like it. The entire floor, it was all chorizo wallpapers, chorizo wallpapers. And uh, and initially, he wasn't planned to be uh, uh, you know an amigo. Uh, that that came a bit later. And uh, yeah, we like to say uh, uh, you know, uh, kill him with kindness. That's chorizo's role. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. I love it. I'm still it. waiting I for my it. chorizo plushie and, and yeah. Yes. It's all I, I love that we're, we're about to go get like a bear and like there's <laughs> been yes, pumas. Are. Not just any. Hey, this is cheeseburger. Not just not a just bear. Any. No, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. This, this is, is not the a bear. bear. This is, yeah, far from far from any any bear. Oh, but the one I and just, only cheeseburger. I love that, that we go from that to. Uh, <laughs> uh, to, to, to a weird dog. <laughs> That's Far Cry. That's Far Cry. Oh, yeah. Right there. I mean, I love there. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Chorizo is far from the only um, member, though, we have of the oh, yeah. Place, right? We got oh, to see yeah. Just, someone else. Just wait. Yeah, we got to see Guapo. Guapo. Uh, handsome. Handsome Guapo. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, and I've been loving seeing, the, you know, the gold tooth, the jacket, you know, the Guapo has a whole backstory and, and, and the, that I think people are going to, uh, folks are really going to love. And it's it's just, you know, it's a, especially on 5, it was kind of really when we started to truly understand the attachment you have to these, you know, pets, you know, these fangs for hires and now these amigos that it just transcends everything so when we were you know working on guapo i think you wanted a, a badass pet with a heart of gold i think that's the is that a bad pun the gold sorry heart, heart and mouth of gold mouth of gold maybe yeah, yeah. didn't quite land it which is great great for a narrative but, uh, oh i love it i love but, uh, it yeah guapo is, yeah i want to it's awesome I want to ask you, so like you you went from writing on Far Cry 5 and now you're narrative director of Far Cry 6. What was that transition like for you personally? I, You know, I was super, uh, I'm thankful every day because on Far Cry 5, uh, you know, I got a nice little window into the role, um, working really closely with, with Montreal um, on, on sort of what it entails. And I also was lucky enough to see, okay, where can we go? with the story, you know, what, what can we do here? And so coming on to Far Cry 6, I think uh, the angle of really finding a personal story around Danny Rojas, you know, who we, we've gone sort of all in on performance capture. We have, you know, amazing uh, actors uh, playing Danny, so Nisa Gundas and Sean Ray, um, who are bringing so much heart and soul to the characters, and and starting from that idea of, you know, 
you know, when does your revolution begin? What, what, you know, will cause you to pick up a, a gun and fight? You know, what is that that moment? And I think a lot of that, you know, you find rooted in in Far Cry Five as well. Those are those are sort of the same questions, and we're just trying to push it, you know, as far as we can, and having you embody body Danny so it was a big uh, at first it was like okay <laughs> this game is huge uh, you know you had to take a moment <laughs> yeah because it's like we're building a country here how do you how do you you know but I think our team was just amazing uh, shout out to the narrative team I'm only as good as uh, the narrative team uh, that we have both in Toronto you know in Montreal you know we have we have uh, you know, all the way to, to Berlin, you know, so um, it was such a great creative atmosphere uh, and, and folks were really fearless to just get in and, and tell the best story we could, so uh, it was a journey, I'm not going to lie, um, there's a lot of learning along the way, but it, the team really, you know, carries you in that way. Oh, boy. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about uh -oh. is, um, ooh, oh, oh, no, oh, no. <gasps> oh, no, oh, no. I thought you weren't allowed to die. I thought you were this, uh, you, know, you, were, you, were, you were telling me you're the most amazing part. No, kidding. Listen, you know, it, it's a whole different thing when you're trying to ask questions and play on stream. And, uh, of course. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the internet uh, issues. No. Oh, man. Uh, Did I just troll you a little? That's, you're never going to have <laughs> no, right. Gun Trust me. Any, anyone who's a regular <laughs> regular viewer of Ubisoft News Plays knows that uh, you, you don't tune in for for the you know, the pro plays. Love it, love it. Uh, oh, but man. what? Yeah, one of the yeah, things I want to question? ask uh, is uh, <laughs> you, you talked about you talked about the actors that portray Danny. Um, mm. And one of the things I'm most excited about for this one is that we get third person cutscenes. Um, yes, a, a new thing for the series. What was that like? Yeah. It was really exciting, and uh, I think it, that was part of really trying to buckle down and tell the sort of block, blockbuster story. And, and, and it also came from the idea of the amount of customization you're going to be able to do in this game is, is immense. So, um, you know, there was, it was sort of a twofold thing. One is, you know, you're going to have all this amazing gear, you're going to have all these amazing what we call resolver weaponry. So. You know, these sort of DIY weapons. You want to be able to show that stuff off um, and, and, and see your loadout, right? But also, if you're if you're inhabiting a role, right? If you're playing as this local yarn, Danny Rojas, to build that connection, you, you want to be able to see him, right? You want to see your see see your character. So, um, you know, whether you're male or female, you're going to be able to see uh, your Danny. Canonically, um, it's one Danny. You know, it's one story. And uh, that was incredibly important to us as well. And, and I think that's, it's exciting because, uh, you know, once we started employing that technique, it really uh, uh, felt natural. Like, it really felt like a natural uh, growth point in, in the brand and and the other thing that we're bringing as well is uh, because we all love Giancarlo Esposito we yes. love Anton and, uh, and and Diego played by the wonderful Anthony Gonzalez um, we're also in, in Far Cry 6 gonna have you know proper cutaways where you're not actually gonna be in the room with them you know one of our starting points was that you know, what's it like to see things from, you know, Anton's perspective? Why is he doing the things that he's doing? So the only way you're going to be able to do that is to go third person, right? So it's this nice opportunity to sort of see how these Far Cry villains behave with when the player isn't around, right. right? And that was really exciting, really exciting for us. And again, it goes back to the team. We had an amazing... You know, cinematics team that went all in on that um, and bring it on is a, is a newer skill set, right? It's a lot of technical considerations, um, but also when you go to it's not just cutscenes, right? When you go to guerrilla camps uh, in the game, which is also a new new element that we've brought in, spots where you can sort of relax, you know, take on some missions, you know, maybe play uh, you know play some mini games and dominoes. Um, you're gonna go cut see. Uh, you're gonna go a third person as well. So you're gonna be able to see your loadout. You're gonna be able to see your weapon, um, and you know, chill out 
for a little while. So it's uh, it's exciting. It re it really is going to feel super fresh. I think. Yeah, I like that because you know in you know Far Cry Five, you know you you get to make your deputy, but uh, yeah. you know, they're they're a silent protagonist, um, and you know out, outside of a, a few moments, you, you don't really get to see them too much. I was I'm so excited mm -hmm. to like really get to know Danny and, and you know see them from from you know in, in cutscenes and interacting with with the world. Yeah, and I think as well for us to tell a story in uh, in Yara, you know, you know, obviously our inspiration is uh, is based in Cuba, but to, but to tell a story in, in the island of Yara, you really need to be from there, and you need to to have a personal investment in the revolution. You want to hear their story. You want to hear you know where they came from, what is motivating them, and with Danny. You know, we're gonna cover the gamut of emotions with that character. Danny's uh, definitely gonna be uh, going through the ringer a little bit with Anton and Diego, um, and and yeah, I think it's just important to get that that personal connection to them. You know, each step of the way. You know, I was a decent fisherman in Far Cry Five. I am a terrible, <laughs> terrible fisher in in real life. So I would always so have games uh, the, the same. So games you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's I I still remember uh, when we were working on this. Like whenever I needed a break or just to zen out, I would fish <laughs> on the project. Yeah. So shout out to our designers <laughs> and, and and everyone who just literally is the most relaxing thing. So and yes, definitely fishing is coming back. Uh, no question. Ooh. Can't oh, be in the art. Right. I mean, can't be in the art. Sitting back Not here. Fresh. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this is chill. This is nice and relaxing. What a relaxing stream. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about Yara for a bit. So, like, when you're finding a setting for this game, where did you look for inspiration? Well, I think the 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 original, very original spark was what it means to be a guerrilla. And so when you you know you're thinking about guerrilla revolution. The brain, we're all wired at this point, I think, to go to Cuba. And so when we started to really research into Cuba, the, the inspirations just kept flowing. And uh, we were lucky enough to go down there uh, and, and really explore and, and get to know folks down there, talk to actual uh, guerrillas, um, get their experiences, their motivations, which were incredibly complex. Uh, but also get to talk to, you know, everyday, you know, you know, Cubans and sh talk late into the night, uh, you know, about share stories and and once we, you know, kind of left and came back, we realized we really wanted to do a bit of a love letter, uh, you know, to the people we met down there and really honor their stories. And so I think uh, it all kind of flowed from that. And then we started, you know, when we were sort of looking at, okay, we're making this fictional island of Yara. We started exploring around the world. We started looking into history as to ter terms of revolutionary movements, and you find like common thematic language that's universal for all of them. You know, what does it take for you to join a revolution? You know, uh, how far are you willing to go for it? What are you willing to sacrifice? Um, you know, in incredibly difficult questions uh, that you know Danny is gonna is gonna have to have to face. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, it was it was really just incredibly inspiring, you know, going on that process. I miss it in a way. That's really the mm -hmm. the dreamland. Yeah, sounds like a <laughs> sounds like a good good part of the job. Good. Yeah, right. The travel. Oh man, it's so much fun. Yeah, it's so much fun, and it's it feels uh so different compared to you know what's happening right now, right? You know, uh, mm -hmm. being oh, yeah. able to travel or now we're home. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, Yusuf. Hey, I, I am distracting games. you, dude. Yo, it, it's all. It, there's so many great facts I'm picking up here. So many yeah, great we're stories. So much. I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, I just can't. You know, having trouble focusing on the game. Uh, no, Aww. it's also because uh, I have not leveled up uh, much yet at all. There it is. There's the real reason. Yeah, you know what? It's because I don't have Boomer with me. That's that's the issue. We need Boomer. Oh, oh he's we absolutely down. need Boomer. Okay. Oh well, I'm no. Two minutes and thirty seconds. All right. Maybe Who hurt him? Get... Maybe we can get cheeseburger. You be careful. You be careful. I can't believe you let Boomer get hurt. That's just unconscionable. So sad. So sad. 
I, this is why I need to bust out the, the Mars laser. <laughs> yeah. It's so amazing you're just walking Mars around laser. with this Mars laser. <laughs> I never thought to, to play it with that. This is how we the, uh, oh man. The, uh, oh, this game's beautiful. I, 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 you know, I used to love just roaming around, going for drives, and that, that's something actually on, on six, uh, we were, you know, it directly came from being inspired by, you know, what we found on five and other Far Cry is that you're going to be able to holster your weapon as well. You're going to be able to, you know, drive around, you know, take in the sights, you know, coast, you know, driving those, you know, you know, old school vintage Chevys uh, is amazing. Our vehicle team did such a good job. Audio, so cool. listening so to cool. And and you listening to to the radio station, the audio team did such an amazing job. Like it feels like you're driving, you're driving those cars, and and so holstering was a big part of that, right? That you're, you know, you you you'll be able to take in the sights as you're as you're scooting around. Yeah, was that was that also like you know to like offer players. Like a, a bit of a, a different way to go about things. Like we see, we saw in the yeah. trailer, you know, Danny's like smuggling, you know, trying to smuggle uh, something in a truck and passes it off as Christmas trees. Right, right. Yeah, it was. It, it, you know, that's the thing is, especially within a revolution, you're gonna have a whole black market that that builds up around that. So, you know, I think it's it's a part of it, and I think there's gonna be so many activities and things that you're gonna be able to dive into that I can't get into here. It's, and this is the thing, I gotta have that check. I gotta have that check. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, we, can't, we, can't, we can't discuss too many... Uh, too Our many marketing things. team's like, stop. Stop talking. Why are you still talking? <laughs> what are you doing? Can't help it. Too excited. Too excited, yeah. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Uh -huh. We're excited too. Yeah. I, I, I do yeah. want to ask, how, how did you feel when Giancarlo Esposito signed on for the role? That was uh, that was insane. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where you're writing a, a, a character, you're working on a character, and you start to hear the voice of you know. You do this all the time. You put in actors, to imagine, oh, if we can get this person, that would be great, you know. And then Giancarlo's voice got a little louder and louder and louder. And then the question was, can we do this? Is that do you think? Uh, and you know, we we flew down to New York. Oh God, I love this. I love this so much. This, this, yeah, this is this is one of my favorite favorite moments. So cute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we flew down to New York uh, to meet with him, and it was amazing. He showed up so prepped. Like more prep than than some of the so many actors I've worked with like like and, and that's how you know the actor is going to be just fantastic. Is he showed up so prepped? He had notes on the script. He had props. He had like uh, oh, wow. a fake, yeah, he had I like a fake it. cigar. I love it. I remember the trailer, the grenade. He had like a ball to use as the grenade. Um, never asked for any of this. Like we were just going to look over the character, talk about the scripts. Um, and he came in in this beautiful suit with a fedora, like beautiful uh, boots, and I was wearing like a hoodie. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh God, you really are! You really are as cool as I thought you'd be." Um, and, and, oh, what a legend! And, <laughs> he is. He really is. And we had a it was a four hour meeting. It was a four hour oh, discussion wow. Wow. where we just talked. We talked about. You know what it means for Anton to be a father. You know he really wanted to hone in on that relationship, and I think um, it's something that we're super stoked by. I couldn't ask for we could ask for a better collaborator, honestly. Uh, he gave so much of himself to the role, um, and and I think as well the the cast was was he really kind of joined the family. Uh, they really were supportive of, of working with him, bringing him on, and. And yeah, it's, you know, I tried to get as much about the Mandalorian I could out of him. <laughs> I was thinking that in my head just now. I was like, I wonder if we, we could say about it. The Mandalorian. Completely failed. <laughs> completely failed. Can't Didn't even say, say Star Wars. Yeah. Didn't say a word. 
<laughs> that sort of glazed uh -huh. over expression, like, you don't need to talk about it. <laughs> no, 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 he was super sweet. But, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, um, the performances that, that, our fans are gonna are gonna see that folks are gonna find. I think um, we had such a diverse, amazing cast that, um, and it speaks to the whole team, to be honest. But uh, what I love about sort of playing through the game right now is you see the DNA of everyone you worked with is in there. You know, you see, you know, what actors brought. You see what the ideas LDs threw in and what artists threw in like chorizo you know never in a million years would i have you know thought that's where chorizo was gonna end up and <laughs> you know that comes from the team i'll just keep saying it like uh, it's it's just really special it's a special time right now um and also shout out to our it people right like yes I, i'm gonna say it non if you're listening man <laughs> <laughs> that, that is my go-to IT guy. Personal like, shout out. I mean, yeah, making, games, making games is hard enough. It's, making games from home is very oh difficult. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. they all deserve all the awards. Like, we have uh, we have an amazing IT team that has, you know, helped us get through this. And I had to say it, like, honestly. It's, it's uh, beautiful. I, folks, I just want to point out a couple things. Uh, people in chat asking some questions, uh, asking if uh, you know why we're playing Far Cry Five. If you if you missed the Far Cry uh, Six reveal, so the Far Cry Six reveal did happen. Uh, we're we're hanging out here playing Far Cry Five with the Far Cry Six narrative director, uh, Navid Khavari here. Um, and then uh, if you missed out on the gameplay reveal and you want to check those out, you can go to YouTube.com/slash Ubisoft. Uh, you will find all the videos there. Uh, and you can you can watch them, check them out on your own time. Um, and then one other thing I really want to mention, I, I'm seeing some people too mentioning that they maybe haven't played a Far Cry uh, in the past or maybe haven't played Far Cry 5. And oh boy, treat. is it a good time to pick one up because yes. Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4, and Far Cry 5 are all on sale right now at the Ubisoft store for three, six, and nine dollars. You can get Far Cry 3 for three dollars. That's ridiculous. Oh, That's so a good. deal. Yeah, so that is a play steal it. right there. I've played them all a hundred <laughs> times, and I'm gonna go do it right now. Oh, I know. Uh, okay. Oh, Hang out with Boomer. It's go. worth it. That's three games for for. <laughs> wait, let me do let me do my math in my head. Eighteen dollars. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah. That, and you know lunch what? In San Francisco. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. It's lunch without tax. Here we go. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> lunch without yeah. tax. Lunch. <laughs> Oh, flashbacks, man. flashbacks, right Seriously? now. Seriously. Um, I don't think we'll get to the the trials. You know, oh, shout man. out to Toronto team, the trials and the Whitetail uh, Mountains. All the memories are coming back, Jacob. <laughs> so yeah, this is one of the things yeah, that happens Jacob, Jacob. Uh, if you're as you're playing and sort of raising the, the resistance oh, level in in each yeah. region or in the Whitetail Mountains. Jacob will yeah. just send his hunting party after you and come. Come, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. The uh, a lot of love and time went into to the trials, and it, it's you know it's it's interesting the the ideas and things that that you never thought would would come to fruition. I remember talking to Misha, a realization director, about this, and and the initial notion was like, wait, you're gonna keep going through these trials over and over and over again, and 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 try and trying to beat your time and it's like yep <laughs> and it's gonna be super hard yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's they, great. they get pretty tough and I'm, I'm wondering too you know I, I went in I went up to this area a little bit early maybe uh, a little bit uh, under level of course you can go wherever you want but uh, uh, and Mark Pellegrino shout out to him he did such a good performance with Jacob there was a second there where I thought you were gonna tell him this is Far Cry 6 congratulations <laughs> this is Look, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I wish I wish I was playing Far Cry 6. But we did get a release date. October 7th. You did. October you did. 7th. And I'll tell you, that has been the single biggest challenges, you know. And big shout out to the fans. Like, the patience, you know, the, the, the Twitter mentions. I know people have been super hungry. Um... But I think, you know, we want to get it right. 
we want to make sure you know it's it's it is what it needs to be and i think uh i hope they love it i hope they love it let's see how's it been for you here. working from home <laughs> uh it's been interesting i uh you know when it when it started uh, it's funny i think it's like a writer thing a part of me was like this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> I get to write at home. Uh, I can and then focus. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can just focus on writing. Uh, and then you just miss the team so much. Like after a, after a week or two, a month, and you know, it's it's amazing how important just being in the same room with a whiteboard um, it is. But uh, but yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, it's been tough, but it's also like shown, I think, just how strong this team is. Like we've all leaned on each other, you know, to to get through it. Much, much like uh, folks around the world are. And I think the there was an element of of you know care for each other that I think you know I, I, I've never seen before in my life. So you know, it's. Uh, it's a real privilege, I think, to, to be a part of it. And these are these are miracles, right? Like you know, the fact that we can sit here and show off the hard work of our team in the midst of a pandemic—it's uh, amazing. So uh, yeah, I'm just thankful. And and, and yeah, it, it's weird. I chose this time to, on a personal note, personal note, to uh, start exercising. <laughs> Which is, it doesn't really make sense, but, it's but I was time. like, it's never, it's never a bad, bad time, time, right? He's right. So I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to start exercising now. Um, so that that was my own personal hurdle, but, uh, but yeah. I love it. Oh, shout out to the Montreal team here, though. They, uh, Montreal and Toronto, we had such a an awesome collaboration both on five and we've had a, a great collab on six like nice. uh again it's it's really been a dream it's a dream playground Naveed, i want to ask because we got we got some looks at some of the uh Rizzle bear weapons yeah. that are coming um we, we saw like a big mini gun there was a nail gun macarena cd yeah right <laughs> I want to. I want to know what your favorite is. Ooh, that is that is tough. Uh, I I think my 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 favorite is is our uh, uh, is is the 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 discos locos, just because it's it's so charming. The macarena. Is that the CD like, player? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like like it's it's so fun. Like uh, I. I I don't want to give. You, you mean you saw it? You saw it in the footage. There's that, and there's also the the Supremo backpacks that are Resolver as well, and we call it a Gorilla Resolver. So it's sort of this character Juan Cortez has taken this concept of you know making do with what you have, you know, trying to you know make something from nothing, and he's fashioned it into like uh, creating chaos with anything you got. So. Uh, the the notion is like, you know, he's in the trenches. He's a gorilla. He's got to pass the time. He's going to read comic books. So he's reading these comic books, and he's like, I can make some cool weapons that are going to make me feel like a superhero. So that's kind of where the, the, the notion of the, the Supremos, uh, how, how it fits in there. And, and, yeah, so there's the Exterminator. There's just so many. That's the thing. Every time you, you trigger a... A Supremo. It's such a satisfying feeling. And I don't know what that says about me that I am enjoying so much <laughs> chaos and destruction, but it's it's one of the most satisfying feelings. Uh, but it's the launcher Supremo. So. Okay. Uh, Steve Botter in chat is bringing up a good point that I, I want to yeah. just uh -oh. throw out. I don't know if there's an answer. I doubt there is. Here we go. What type of ammo magazine is required for the Macarena CD launcher? Maybe a, <laughs> a, mag, maybe a mag o -Rena? Oh, no. I'm not going to answer that uh, because of the pun, I think. I don't, I don't think that... No, the pun, you know, the pun is the answer. Every... every every dev team i've been on there's been you know one or two people that are the master of puns 
So, so for us, it's our associate narrative director, Paul Dobson, who, it's just, I don't even know where he comes up with this stuff. And it's that, it's weird, it's a love-hate thing, like, they say them, you, you, you hate it, but then you kind of love it and you want more. It's kind of masochistic that way, I guess, I don't know. I, I, I know exactly what you mean. We have a lot of like, you know, punny people on you know, the Ubisoft comms team. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, God, that was good, but I also don't want to give you the satisfaction. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I love a good pun. I can't resist. I love it. Sorry, Eli. We're going to go out. Eli, and we're find our Eli. Own. You don't want to talk to Eli. Oh. Oh, maybe I have to to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You might, yeah, I think you do, for sure. Dutch speaks highly. I mean, that's that, and this, you know, I remember when we were working on the Wolf's Den, you know, a lot of the the ideas that percolated from that, you know, I, I'm really excited for the guerrilla camps that that players are going to see, you know, in, uh, in Far Cry 6, like these spots where you can sort of hang out and see guerrilla life, and also... You've got things like, uh, you know, right folks playing music as well, like hearing some of that, the, the, that, that uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful music that we've worked with a wide range of, of artists and uh, that you're going to see. And, man, I just I can't wait for that soundtrack <laughs> to come out. Yeah, I know. But, uh, the, uh, I think the, the gorilla camps are going to be... Uh, a really fun addition, and there's there's also, I mean, just so folks know, we're gonna have we're gonna have multiple guerrilla camps, and we're also gonna have multiple towns. So you know, in, in Far Cry Five, um, we had you know Falls End. So imagine there's like three Falls Ends uh, in Yara that you're gonna be able to to explore and check out that have their own unique you know identity and and flavor um, on top of having the capital city of Esperanza. So right out the gate, it was, what do you have when you're making a nation? You have the city, capital city, you got towns, you got, you got mountains, you got all that stuff. So so it's, uh, I'm on, ta I'm tangent city right now. So. No, 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 this is why we you got, got me all hyped We're loving up. it. I got me hyped it. up from the reveal. We're so learning so much. Forever. Well, I mean, that's another really cool thing is that like Far Cry has always been a very rural uh, like franchise. Like it's you know it's taking place mostly you know in in woods and forests and things like that. Yep. And like going into like an actual urban environment with with the capital city is like oh that's going to completely change things. Yeah, and it's uh, the idea there is it's really you know like it is in most revolutions you know that's the seat of power. The the Tour de Leon, uh, where um, Anton's situated, you're gonna see is is sort of capital capital building from way out, uh, and you know it, it's the most I'm very open about it. The most difficult part of the game is is strongest forces uh, are there, uh, and and you're sort of the goal. The whole goal, right, of of any revolution is to you know, unite the people, unite the movements, unite the guerrillas to surround Esperanza and uh, and take Anton down. So it's in the moment we started working on it, and you know, it just has its it just changes the feel. You know, even just seeing it as you're coming up to it, this imp these imposing sort of structures, um, it feels uh, super fresh for a Far Cry game, and I think. I think it's kind of a natural kind of evolution of the brand in a lot of ways where I always say we're standing on the shoulders of giants, like, you know, the going from Falls End to the city, you know, um, it, it felt it felt natural. Like it felt like the right place to go. Yeah, I think that I think nice. that's that's really cool and like I don't know, I, the environments are always so great in Far Cry and just like getting seeing something like Yara is just feels like nothing you know, I, I've seen in the series before, and it just it just yeah. got me so excited. Yeah, and, and as you're like going through the the wilderness, I can throw out as well is we have, um, you know, we have these goats, we have these mountains, uh, and and mountain ranges and and jungle, and you're gonna have uh, what we call gorilla paths that are sort of spider webs 
that, that are spread out through the jungle, built by the guerrillas in the previous revolution in 1967. So you're going to be able to go through those, you know, find gear, you know, also like do ambushes and, and really feel like a guerrilla. And, you know, when I'm playing the game, it actually, it always reminds me of when I was in Cuba and I was walking through the Maestra, Sierra Maestra. And when you're in those mountains, you know, there's a group of six of us and I take one step and then suddenly everyone's disappeared. I'm like, where'd you go? What, what happened? I'm terrified. I'm alone. And then I turn the corner and there they are. It's like, you know, it's so dense and thick uh, that you, it's so easy to get lost in it. And what was amazing in that and what we've tried to capture in six is you understand that's how they won. They disappeared from this overwhelming force. You could have the biggest tanks, you can have the biggest air force, and if you can't see your target, what are you going to do? So it was, uh, it's an amazing feeling in the game as well, like, uh, that I think the team has worked super, shout out to our artists, you know, designers, they've, they've really done an incredible job of, of giving you that, that, uh, and the LDs, of course, the, giving you that gorilla sort of feeling. Yeah, that is really cool. I think one of the things that has me very intrigued and I want to, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to mention this and then I want to ask a question to, to both uh, you, Chastity and Naveed. Uh, so horses are rideable for the first time um, yeah. in, in a Far Cry game. And I want to I know everyone's reading, you know, what's your reading and experience? You know, have you ridden a horse in real life? How do you feel about them? <laughs> Uh, I'm, Chastity, I'm you go first because I've been talking. I have. Yeah, no, I, I have. I, I enjoy it. I'm not an expert or by any means, but whenever I get the chance to, like if I'm traveling somewhere or just happen to book some kind of horse riding expedition, like I, it's it's always like an easy trail and like someone's guiding me like in front of me. But I, I really do enjoy it, and I think it's I think it's great. I, I haven't done it about two years, but I'd love to ride a horse again. Two years isn't that long ago. That's, that's I don't consider it three years. Hold on. I, keep yeah. I keep ignoring that's 2020. I keep ignoring 2020. It was three years ago. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to say it right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say it. We have amazing vehicles in Far Cry 6. The horse is my number one favorite way of getting around. Yeah? It feels oh. so good. <laughs> It feels so good, um, and yeah, I have I have done horse riding. I actually did it in Cuba, um, and what a flex! Uh, it was a little bit, a little bit now. <laughs> no. But I'm gonna unflex in a second. We were riding. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, the only time I'd been like, you know, I'm from a small town, but I was terrified of horses. So that's it's a whole other therapy session. But I think that when we were there. I, uh, I, I'm riding it, I'm, I'm, I'm moving along, and for the bulk of the horse ride, I'm like, okay, this feels good, like, but I guess, I keep hearing how great horse riding is, this feels pretty slow, and then the, the, the cowboy rides up next to me, and he's like, come on, go, and I was like, what, and then the horse took off, oh. and like, you know, and then it was, A, it was an amazing feeling, I was like, I have been doing this wrong. Like you're supposed to like sort of snap and it goes. I was like, I've been doing this wrong the entire time. And I don't know if you had this chastity where your butt and the 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 horse you're not in sync. Saddle, yeah. yeah, you're oh. not in sync. So you're you're coming down as it goes up. It was painful. 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 That sounds painful. That does sound painful. But you painful. don't have that in Far Cry Six. You can ride it <laughs> safely to know. from your couch. From your couch. I'm excited to ride horses in Far Cry 6 for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, these notes. We spent so much time on these. There's so many fun little stories. Uh, and one of the joys, too, when, you, when you're when you finishing something like Far Cry 5 is, you know, seeing fans discover the little clues that we put in, Easter eggs. You know, you're going to get plenty of that. Oh, yeah. Get uh, plenty of that. So the reason, you know, I'm, you know, Chastity is fairly new to me. This is the first stream we, we've done together. Uh, no. 
Wow. L long time. Wow, it's not the first one you guys have done, though. No, 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 it's no, not the no, first. No. But, okay. Yeah. With you. Like, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one of you know, one, our longtime viewers may know this. This is like somewhat of a recurring theme on uh, Ubisoft News Plays, is that uh, I tend to play a lot of the games that feature horses, you know, whether it be <laughs> uh, like Assassin's Creed. Um, well, I mean, oh, 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 I did not mean to pull that parachute. Uh, but basically, it all this all boils down to the fact that I am quite intimidated by horses. Uh, oh, really? I, mm. I think we are all a little bit too haphazard with you know, getting our fingers right near their mouths, you know, feeding them <laughs> carrots, you know, very, you know, things that look a lot like our fingers. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm tumbling. Uh, and so, That's hilarious. you know, I love I, beautiful animals, gorgeous animals. I just don't think we, uh, you know, I don't think we respect and fear them enough. I think they deserve... Is, a, that, a, from a, is that from a sort of personal experience? Did you have a yeah, fight with a horse? Happen? I yeah, no. Cool. I, I, you know, I don't even, th I've never and even touched won? a horse, uh, but it's just, they're just such powerful beasts, like. They're kind of like dogs, though. I, I, you know, I had a, it was amazing, I knew someone who, who owned a horse, um, and I, I didn't ride their horse, but I, I visited them at the, the ranch, and they like, hey, give them an apple, right? I was like, right. okay, and I held out the apple, and it looked... It was weird. All the grace and ele elegance and all that disappeared, and it just sort of clopped over like a dog and started <laughs> mowing down on this apple. I'm like, you're not as terrifying at all that I thought you'd be. See, I get that. I think the the tricky part is chat, getting on yeah. and off. I get that they're very the chat, friendly. Um, sorry, oh, the on player no, in the chat no, said, I've worked, I've worked with horses and they're gentle giants, so thank exactly. you for that confirmation. Yes. <laughs> I believe that. 100%. I, I have no doubt of that. I'm not... I'm not... Uh, I would never argue the the, the opposite. I just feel like, you know, if they get spooked and they kick you, you know, you're you're down for the count. And, you know, if yes. They, they, yes. They got strong jaws. If they they mistake. I think there's I think carrot. there's a I think there's a horse ride together for us in the future. You know we'll, what? We'll, Team we'll horse ride. Out. Team horse ride. We'll ride out. We'll go to Cuba. And we'll, uh, we'll get Go some horses. Keyboard. Which is another way to say we will have co-op in Far Cry 6, for sure. You're going to be able to ride horses with your friends. There you go. Um, yeah. I did yeah, see I, I... Oh, there you go. Great. Yeah, and you know, it's it's funny because to this day, you know, you know and, and shout out to our animation team, like being able to pet the horse... Pet Guapo, Pet Chorizo, um, it's just so satisfying. Like, <laughs> it, it's not real. I know it's not real, but like you forge that bond, right? And it's, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. You know, when I was in Cuba, I rode a donkey down the mountain. Very different, very different experience. It, oh, okay. Don no donkeys are very sweaty. Yeah. How's that? Donkeys are very <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> They are, yeah. It was like I was gonna have that like beautiful moment where I, you know, pet its neck, and then I, I lifted my hand. I was like, this is covered with sweat, and I don't know why. <laughs> oh but, uh, man! I mean, well, you, you got all right. To be fair, if any of us were lugging up, you know, a grown person on our backs up a mountain, I think that's fair. I think we'd be a little sweaty too. Totally fair. No judgment here. No judgment. It's a good point. Here. It's a good point. <laughs> Uh, I saw someone asking about the release date in the chat. It's October 7th for Far Cry 6. So get yes. excited. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask you a personal question, Naveed? So how did you get sure. into writing for games? Oh, how much time do you have? OK, so <laughs> oh. uh, it's, it's actually, uh, it's, 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 this is what I love about games and what I love about our team as well, is everyone you talk to on our team has a different story of how they, that's so personal and unique. And I, and I find that's really unique to, to game dev. For me, uh, my brother actually was, a, was an animator. He's an art director now, but he would always bring me along, even when I was like 12, <laughs> you know, he would bring me along to these story meetings he was having and, and, and I'd be, I was writing terrible, terrible scripts for animated shows when I was like 15. Um, 
And then eventually, you know, I sort of put it aside, studied history and poli sci, but I, I was still writing. And then an opportunity came up with a small company. Uh, it's no longer around, unfortunately, um, where I wrote for motion comics, uh, motion comics for a show called Lost Girl. So that was really interesting because it wasn't games, but it was interactive. And so it was like a baby step into the into the industry. But I wasn't even supposed to be a writer. I was supposed to be a musician. I don't know what happened what? Oh, along wow. the way. What, what, what kind of musician? <laughs> Hold on, we got to pause for a second. Wait, what kind of musician no, no, are we no, talking no. about? Oh, a singer-songwriter <laughs> deal. So I'm going to start plugging. Oh, that okay. Well, there you album. go. I mean, you were yeah. always a writer. That's amazing. That's it. I and, love and, that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you never imagine where you'd end up, right? So moved to Toronto to do music, ended up joining a video game company, and, and there you go. And that's something, you know, you know, my first sort of big AAA was Splinter Cell. Blacklist, then moved into Far Cry. Um, I'm always thankful that I got a bit of exposure to how animated shows work, how you know some of these TV folks work. And one of the things we wanted to do on Far Cry 6 was kind of approach a writers' room mentality, like bring on a lot of writers from games, from TV, and and sort of have a cohesive room where. It's a safe space where everyone can pitch their story ideas, um, and hopefully the results speak for themselves. So it's, like I said, it's funny when I play the game now. I tell the team this all the time. It's like, I see you in this character. Oh, that's that that's like you recognize little little uh, quirks and traits uh, within your team. And then, but yeah, that was my journey. It was a very winding one. Very winding one. I don't, yeah, I think I think oh. so, so many people have very wide ones. That, that's that's such a cool mm -hmm. background. I had no idea. Any chance we? How get about a, you? Uh, how how did you how did you folks get get into this? You said you go first. Oh, I mean, my my, my story is, is probably just about as roundabout as yours. Uh, I studied architecture. Uh, oh wow! So cool. Uh, so cool. I even I oh no, the host there were hostages. <laughs> Uh -oh. Naveen, Naveen, Naveen's sabotaging me. That's what's happening. I really am. I, yeah, I want to learn everyone's life story. Uh, the is. interviewee has become the interviewer. <laughs> That's it. You see what I did there? Yeah, yeah no. Uh, wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's another one of those so situations cool. of how much time you have. But basically, I uh, <laughs> I realized I didn't want to be an architect. Uh, and then I, that, and I really, you know, Realized that, that there was a lot of crossover with games, um, in, at least in how you think For about sure. them and, and can write about them and you know even design them. And so I was, um, uh, I kind of started doing more writing about games, um, oh. and then uh, that eventually led me here. Uh, and Chastity, you're up now. Yeah. You're up. How did you get it? <laughs> Um, I also wanted to be a musician when I was younger, oh, and that no didn't way. quite work out. Yeah, that didn't quite work out. Also, a singer, um, been there, been there. But yeah, yeah, been there. Yeah, there was no money, <laughs> so like, it, it wasn't gonna work out. And my family had very high expectations for me. Um, but <laughs> no, I ended up uh, going into journalism. But oh, then, wow. I mean, there's not a lot of money. Not a lot of money there either. But like, I, I like, I look. Writing, I liked um, just TV, cool. and I and I found that that was a way to like break into production here in the Bay Area. Yeah. So I went into TV news, did TV news for like four years, and then I wanted to focus on entertainment and things that I was just um, more passionate about. So games That's and awesome. TV and movies, and so then I went to um, I eventually went to IGN, then to Gamespot, and then now I'm here wow. after four and a half years at Gamespot. Yeah. So that's amazing. But I'm happy to just be like, here. Yeah. How we how we all end up where we are, and and now we're on a live stream, <laughs> right? <laughs> and now we're if you'd on a live stream. If you'd asked me when I was at a coffee shop playing an acoustic guitar to an audience of no one, like an empty coffee shop, that I would be here talking about Far Cry Six, you know, in fifteen years, uh, I would have said that's not happening. Wait, so, so so I gotta ask, you know, what are the chances we get uh, an Easter egg, like maybe song on the radio, 
Yeah, <laughs> write a song for the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving any of that away. Uh, oh, I will. I I will. I definitely didn't do that. But we, you know, the audio director and I did have. Uh, I can say we did have some fun in terms of lyrics uh, for for some things you'll find in Ooh. in Far Cry Six, and I'll I'll leave it at that. And and eagle eyed fans. Uh, and folks in particular who speak Spanish will will hopefully catch catch it. So uh, I got to be careful. But yeah, That's yeah. And and the 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 music. This is the thing. Far Cry is such an amazing legacy of of amazing audio. Like the I was telling you before, Yusuf. Uh, I used to just leave the menu screen. For Far Cry 5, going because I love I love the score and and on six we have um, Pedro Bronfman, who uh, you know worked on Narcos, he worked on on Robocop, and it was awesome to see fans react to that last year as well. It's like uh, the sort of epic sweeping score that you you know would fit right in on a you know a Netflix show, right? Um, that he's brought is just. It's awesome, and it's just the beginning. Like there's the pieces. I don't know how he does it, but uh, the pieces that he comes up with are just fantastic. So there's a great balance of score and and also the diegetic, you know, radio stations and 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 amazing licensed music that you're gonna see that our audio team has put together. So. Oh man, that's exciting. Heavy presence. Yeah. Good so yeah, if you're a fan, of, if you're if you're a music fan, buggle up because it's. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's exciting. Uh, Mari five ten in the chat said, "Love the gameplay trailer, guys. Good job. Yeah, it was great. Aww. And if you if you want to check it out, it's on YouTube right now. So go to YouTube.com/slash/Ubisoft if you missed out on the latest Far Cry Six gameplay reveal. Please watch it. It's very good. Okay. Okay. Cheese is fine. Don't. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger's uh, good. Happy, happy cheeseburger. one song. Uh, don't fear. Far Cry 6 will be having co op. Yes. yes. A lot of people ask me about Absolutely. Entire campaign, too. You'll be able oh, to play oh. the whole thing. Ooh. Play the whole thing in co op. We're, we're going to keep moving. We, uh, we started yeah, some things maybe here. A, yeah, hustle on there. <laughs> gonna, uh, okay, let's. Let's head over in the uh, lumberyard area. Uh, of course, folks, we do uh, we do have to wrap up uh, very soon. So if you do have any questions about uh, Far Cry 5 or Far yeah, Cry shoot. 6, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. We will do our best to uh, to get to them. Yeah, That's the crazy the thing is uh, this is my fourth Far Cry, so I feel like uh, you can ask me literally <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah. at all. I'll find some repository of random information. Right. right, but so so I mean, this is one of the things that that comes up a lot with Far Cry, and you know, obviously John Carlo Esposito is, is uh, portraying the the latest villain here. But um, no. when it comes to villains, uh, I'm not going to ask you your favorite. I'm not going to make you pick favorites. No, no, don't uh, do that. No, 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 <laughs> certainly not. My but Twitter will, them right will now. crash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what was your like? Like, were you like, was Voss your first experience? Like, I don't, I don't believe you you worked on three, right? But like, did you? No, I didn't work on three. Voss was was definitely my uh, like sort of my first sort of whoa, what a performance um, experience. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, you know, Michael uh, really Mando. set the yeah. yeah Mando. Sorry, he really set the bar. Uh, as to as to, okay, all right, everybody, good luck. Um, and so I think you know we saw what happened, right? Troy Baker did an amazing job. Greg Brick, um, you know, I was lucky enough to see uh, you know get to meet him and and, and see him work on on Far Cry Five. Um, and it, it's just been really cool to see, and I've seen it on Twitter as well. Like they've been really supportive. I think of. Of Far Cry 6, and and it's like uh, I like to say Giancarlo's uh, joining the family, <laughs> like uh, like a mob boss. <laughs> he's joining. <laughs> the, 
He's joining the family, so to speak. That's it's great. kind of yeah, yeah. It's kind of this evil little mafia family now of villains. It is For real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a related question on the chat from uh, sure. TL Josh. What is the number one thing that goes into creating the signature style of the villain that Far Cry is well known for? That's Fantastic a good question. TL question. Josh. Uh, and I have an answer, uh, which is really not thinking of them as a villain at all. Uh, and it might sound uh, odd, but you know, one of the things the team and I always talked about was that every character has a heartbeat. You just have to find it, right? Every person you meet has a heartbeat. Where is it, right? Because uh, I think that's the secret sauce of what makes Far Cry villains stand out, which is if you're in a room with them, sat at the kitchen table, they're charming enough, smart enough, to make you stop for a second and think, okay, maybe there's a point. Maybe there's a point there. Um, and that their motivations come from a very grounded and, and real place, right? You know, with Anton, this is someone who lost everything to a revolution when he was, when he was just a teenager. He watched his father executed. He, you know, went through this har harrowing ordeal so at Anton's eyes, he's just, hey, I'm course correcting here. I'm bringing the country, bringing the country back, and then also that personal motivation of I have a son who I want to be prosperous and and, and be courageous, and I'm going to pass these lessons down to him to make him feel strong. None of that is a villain, right? If if I shared that to you on a on a page you'd be like yeah there's a lot of dads that would relate to that so i think that's that's really it or that was it for us uh when we were working on anton nice uh a question here you don't have to be specific but ashy three classy sure. is asking any nods to old far cry games in the new one yes <laughs> with a big keep an smile. eye out for easter I, eggs yeah I, I, there, I will say there are some really good ones, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. So yes, definitely keep your eye out. I love what you said about not thinking about them as a villain, though, because like mm. I think like my you know my favorite villains in, in fiction, like I think there's always a there, there's always a, a, a chance to like or a perspective where you can look at it from their side and you know yeah. see the way in which they're the hero of their story. Oh. Absolutely. I mean, you look at Joseph C., you know, that's a person that sees himself as, you know, I'm having these visions. I am being told, you know, the end of the world is coming. So he's acting a certain way, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you know, you, the bar was set so high on on these games, and we just are we're hoping to meet it. You know, and I think uh, you know I, I'm super proud of the work that went into the announcement trailer we had last year. Um, but also, I think now, what's such a nice, fun relief is you get to see the other side of it. You get to see Danny. You get to see Juan. You get yes. to see the answer to to Anton, and there's a lot more of that to come. Yeah, I you know I don't even know if it necessarily occurred to me that this was the first time that you know we were really showing off Danny. Um, yeah, who I think is just mm -hmm. such an interesting character, and like you know again the the fact that so many of the cutscenes take place in third person, or that that you know you get to uh, you get to see and see them in, a, in a, a way that hasn't happened in Far Cry before I think uh, I'm already I'm already growing attached <laughs> once you once you play it and you see it you, you kind of are like oh I didn't even realize you know that I'm I'm going into the third person so right. it's it it's an amazing feeling and yeah I, I can't wait for people to see more of the uh, of folks to see more of Danny's journey it's uh, it's gonna be fun for sure. Yeah, and if uh, folks, if you did, if you missed the uh, the reveal of the Far Cry 6 gameplay, that is over on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com/ubisoft. Um, here right now, we're hanging out, playing Far Cry 5. Uh, this will probably be. I'm gonna try to liberate this uh, outpost here, 
and then uh, we'll probably. You weren't feeling the stealth there. You weren't feeling. No, no. Well, you know, I, I, had to, I <laughs> took out, I took out the alarm. Uh, you know, yeah, that's the most important yeah. thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now we're gonna. Is the yeah. bow? Is the bow your favorite weapon? That, oh yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of yeah. the bow. You're one of those. Yeah. Actually, so to be fair, indeed, uh, my yeah. oh oh cheeseburger finished it off. Oh, there you go. Cheeseburger. <laughs> Thank you, cheeseburger. Here. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so my real favorite thing in Far Cry Five is the shovels. Uh, yes. I was wondering where I, was I thought you were going to throw the shovel. some shovels. I was yeah. thinking about the shovel. I just didn't have enough shovel launcher action. Oh, true. Yeah, the shovel launcher. I mean, that that came that came post launch. But yeah, I yeah. used to just uh, I used to do playthroughs where I would uh, roll nine shovels deep and see if I could liberate an outpost <laughs> with nothing but shovels. Wow. And, uh, Did you do it? Oh, oh, tons. I even amazing. They, they, so unfortunately, there's a there's a long lost video that unfortunately never saw the light of day. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I spent the better part of a day and a half, I would say, when Far Cry first came out, putting together a uh, shovel trick shot video. What? Uh, in which I would like. Oh, that's amazing. I would do like. Wow. Oh, I don't have one. But like I would, I would line it up kind of where I would like be on top of a building or a mountain or like really high up and just like throw the shovel and like have it come down and hit someone. Uh, you know, shout out to our fan, our fans too, and just so they know. We watch that stuff. Like we are constantly when we're when we're uh, when we're working on this. Like there's a, there's not a week that goes by. It's like oh check out what this 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 fan did. Uh, you know with the trick shots. And I remember on Primal it was the spear. You know mm. uh, we love that stuff. We get inspired by it, and it's it's what makes Far Cry so great. Is like you put these ingredients out. And then it comes back to you in ways you never thought possible. So yeah, I, I can't wait to see more of those. It's so especially cool. with Guapo. It's so <laughs> Guapo. Guapo. Chorizo. <laughs> Chorizo. I cut you off. Uh, I cut you off. I got excited. We got a request from Get My Rice, and who says, "Add the tequila song to the CD launcher." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, can you imagine? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. Actually, yes, it's very easy. Okay, to yeah, okay, yeah, I could. Yeah, like, I could make uh, it. Yes, I can. It's perfect. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Uh, it's, but a folks, it's a good note. It's a good note. We are about to wrap up. Uh, of course, we stream every Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time right here on Twitch.tv slash Ubisoft. Also, YouTube.com slash Ubisoft. Go ahead and give the channel a follow if you like that because we often do giveaways and it gives you a chance to win free stuff. Who doesn't like winning nice. free stuff? But no, more importantly, we are about two weeks out, y'all, uh, from Ubisoft Forward, June 12th, right here on this channel, wherever you're watching. That's right. Uh, it is going to go live. You're going to get to see more from Far Cry 6, more from a ton of other Ubisoft games that you don't want to miss out on at all. Woo! It's going to be good. Subscribe. Follow. Don't miss <laughs> Do it. it. Do it. Don't miss it. Uh, yeah. Naveed, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you want to leave you. the, uh, the the folks with uh, before we sign off? Uh, I mean, the first thing is, I hope the fans loved it, but my number one thing I want to say is thank you to the team. You know, I'm here representing an amazing, amazing team that has worked so hard to get this uh, in front of all of you. So big shout out to them. Uh, you know, we're, we're just, uh, I feel so privileged to be here to talk about their hard work. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. Oh, of course. You are welcome anytime. Anytime, Naveed. Thanks for uh, joining us, Naveed. Yeah. Oh, all right. And uh, yeah, folks, we are going to send you off in the way we always do now, uh, where we're going to raid someone else. Uh, so we're going to send you off. Of uh, As always, you know, be kind, be courteous. Maybe drop them a follow if, uh, if you're digging what they're doing. And uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye. Take care.